Hi out there, how are you doing today? My name is Sascha Avala and I'm the conference chair of the annual FRUS conference 2013, which will take place in Brussels. At our annual conferences, we always have about 100 presentations about relevant topics for people who work in biometric departments in the pharmaceutical industry. At each conference, there are many presenters who present for the first time in front of a big audience. Especially in our well-received industry starter stream, we want to offer first-time presenters an opportunity to present their ideas. So today, I want to talk about good presentations. This presentation should give you some help, especially if you never gave a presentation or if you feel unsure how you give a well-structured and clear presentation. First, I will give you a reason why you should give a good presentation. Then, I will talk about the content of your presentation and give you some thoughts what you should present. After that, I will go into more details and talk about how you should present. Finally, I will close my talk with some action items for you and give some ideas what you could do either if you are a line manager or an employee. Let's start with the why. Why should you give a good presentation? And if you are a line manager, why should you encourage your people to give good presentations? Have you ever said in a meeting or a presentation which was not good? If that's the case, then you most likely ask yourself, what am I doing here? Why am I here and not at my desk where work is waiting for me? I think we all had these thoughts already. But if you think about that a little bit more, in a typical Fuse talk there are about 50 people sitting in a room and listen to you for about 25 minutes. So let's do the math. 50 times 25 minutes that is 1,250 1, minutes or 20 hours or half a week of time. That's a lot of time in that room, isn't it? Think about that. Half a week. You don't want to waste other people's time and money, do you? So there are pretty good reasons why you should strive to give the best presentation you can. Now let's talk about what you should present. The best delivery skills are useless when the content of your presentation is not important. When you start to think about what you should present, you should think about the content of your presentation and you have to think about your audience as well. But why is that important? Well, your audience is sitting in the room because they have a problem. Everybody in the audience is thinking, what is in here for me? They don't sit there because of you. They sit there because of themselves. They might have been attracted by the nice title of your presentation, but ultimately they want to have something. This problem might be a lack of knowledge, which you want to train with your presentation, or you want to persuade them to do something. Regardless of the actual topic, your audience has a problem. And they might be aware of that, or they don't. What about you? You want to offer a solution for the problem. That's why you give this presentation to the audience. You know something that they don't know. You know the solution of the problem. And that, and only that, should be the content of your presentation. The content of your presentation is always a solution of their problem. Nothing more and nothing less. The content is exactly the same as the solution. Well, you probably know even more. You are invited to give a presentation since you are a subject matter expert of a topic. But don't distract the audience by telling them everything you know. Stay focused. Focus on the solution of the problem. If you don't do that, you will overwhelm the audience with information. They will lose the focus and might not get your main point, which is the solution of their problem. So don't tell them too much. Now we know why we should do it good and what we should present. But how should you actually give your presentation? Here we'll talk about the clarity, the actual presentation structure and last but not least the delivery of your presentation. What do I mean with clarity? There are some presentations where you leave the room and think that you really liked it. It was well presented, but you cannot really remember the content. That often is caused by a lack of clarity of your presentations. 
There is an easy rule which is called the three T's. The first T is tell them what you're going to tell them. You always should start with an opening where you give the outline of your presentation. That gives your presentation a clear structure and prepares the audience for the actual body of your talk. Then tell it. With the body of your presentation you tell your audience what you want to tell them. And at last you will summarize and wrap it up by telling them what you told them. Always finish with a summary or conclusion and close your presentation. If you follow the 3T rule, your audience has a clear idea what they can expect and what they heard. It is a good way to set up the high level structure of your talk. Once you thought about the high level structure with the 3T rule, you should think about more details about the actual body of your presentation. I would like to introduce you to a method which is called PPAA. PPAA will help you to structure your thoughts in a presentation. Actually, every business communication can be made pretty efficiently in PPAA. Well, what does PPAA stand for? The first P stands for problem. That is a problem of the audience, remember? The second P stands for proposal. That is your proposal for that problem. Then the first A is for advantage. This is the advantage your audience will have if they accept your proposal. And finally, the last A stands for action plan. If they accept your proposal, give them something to do. Now let's look more detail into that problem thing. Keep in mind, it is not your problem. No one in, is interested in your problem. It is a problem of the audience you need to address. So present the problem to the audience. And if they accept this as a problem for them, they will listen to you because they see that there is something in for them. That leads us to the proposal. You give a proposal which solves the problem of the audience. They learned about the problem, they accepted that this is their problem, now tell them how you think they can solve the problem. And then you need to sell your proposal to your audience by giving them advantages. What are the advantages of your proposal? The main advantage is of course that it solves the problem. But why do we buy things? We buy things since they have some added advantages for us. For example, there are plenty of MP3 players on the market and all solve our problem to listen to music. But we buy a certain MP3 player based on added advantages. Some people might decide based on a cheap price. Others will decide based on the design, while others might decide for a certain MP3 player based on connectivity options. We buy things based on the added advantage and that is how you should sell your proposal as well. What is the added advantage of your proposal for the audience? If your audience followed you until this point, you are almost there. You made them aware of their problem, they accepted your proposal and they agree on the added advantages. Now you need to give them an action. This action could be as easy as start to use it or if you want to use this new programming technique, you can find some sample code on the Fuse Wiki. Or, if you want to know more details about that great tool, please read my paper or get in contact with me. The action plan at the end of the presentation will give them something to do to solve their problem. PPAA is a quite powerful tool which you can use in many different business communications. If you use it for the content of your presentation, it is well structured and can be followed easily by your audience. Now let's talk about the actual delivery of your presentation. This is about the environment and the way you give that presentation. We give presentations in various occasions. You might think about a conference presentation now, but there are also other occasions and settings for your presentations. These potential settings are telephone conferences, video conferences or face-to-face -face meetings like you have in a Fuse meeting. The worst is definitely the telephone conference. With telephone conference, I mean a phone conference where you don't have any visual option to present. Actually, it will be only your voice which presents, 
but you can make it a little bit more convenient for your audience if you share slides prior to the disease. And then you lead your audience through the slides. You have to speak in a variable voice, so speak louder for important words, speak slower or faster to stress something. Repeat important points in different phrases just to ensure everyone gets your point. Also, think that there might be some people in the audience who are non-native speakers. So don't use any slang or local phrases. Be cautious with jokes, which might have a different meaning in another country. And of course, don't speak too fast. And always repeat questions of the audience before answering them. A better, but still not perfect setting in a, is a video conference. With video conference I mean a meeting where you have audio and can, can, for example, present slides as visuals in addition to the audio. The audience might also be able to see why you present. All what I said for the TC is still true for the audience, um, for the video conference, but it has the advantage that it is easier to follow your presentation since you control the visuals. The best option to give a presentation is definitely a face-to-face -face setting. With face-to-face -face setting I mean a typical conference presentation where you have the audience and the presenter in the same room. At a face-to-face -face meeting you can use everything. You can use your voice, you can use your slides as visuals, but you can also use your body language as an additional visual. Everything which was already said about your voice is still true, but your body language gives you an additional advantage and is really important if you want to give a good presentation. You always should look at your audience, not on your slides. If you look at your slides, you tend to just read from the slides. That is no advantage for your audience since they can read it on their own. So look at your audience. Pick a single person to look at and change your view after you've finished a thought. You also should use describing gestures with your hands to stress the main message. Don't be too hectic with your gestures and hold them for a moment. This is like using an exclamation mark in writing and stresses the meaning. Also don't use single fingers. This is difficult to see at the back of the room and I don't know how often someone showed me the finger while, I, while he was counting something with his fingers. It's also not nice to finger point on people. So avoid fingers in any case. Better use your open hands to describe things. There, your palms should preferably show to yourself while your audience can see the back of your hands. In total, the delivery is really important for a good presentation. It distinguishes a presentation from a reading and should, should support your message. All what has been said so far is difficult to learn or to develop. That's why I want to give you some ideas what you can do in order to give good presentations. There are different ideas depending if you're a line manager or an employee. If you're a line manager, it is your responsibility to develop the people skills of your direct reports. How could you do that? Well, just by creating opportunities. Create opportunities to present within own, your own team first. This is a safe harbor and almost feels like home. Presenters will feel comfortable if they present in their own team. Once they feel comfortable enough, the next step should be to let them present in a bigger group within your company, but outside the team setting. If they also manage that, they are most likely so comfortable in presenting that they would not panic if they have to present outside of your company. At the Fuse conference, for example. Bottom line is that you should give your direct reports the opportunity to become familiar with presenting. And there are plenty of opportunities when they could present. For example, let them present when a task is done. If, for example, a programmer finished a study and moved all tables, figures and listings to production, you might want to ask them to give a presentation. This presentation could be about the study results or the most interesting challenges they solved in their programming. If this presentation is given at the team level, the rest of the team will learn something as well. So this is not just a presentation for the sake of a presentation. After the presentation you should give a feedback in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Ask your direct report first what he thought 
and then give your feedback what you think. Agree on one or two items they should focus to improve next time. Rome was not built in one day and so aren't good presenters. If you focus on a single item each presentation, you will become better and better. If you videotape the presentation, you can give very objective feedback and your direct report will be able to see and think about his performance. That is also something you should consider. But don't put the video on YouTube, hand over the video to your direct report and let him decide what he wants to do with it. All this can be easily included in the annual objectives of, your, of each of your direct reports. If they knew up front that they have to present, they can start to ask the right question in the beginning, so at the time they start to become familiar with the actual task. If you are an employee, there is no other way to give good presentations than to practice it. This presentation might help you to learn the basics, but you need to practice, practice and practice. For most of us, presenting is an unnatural situation. We don't like to stand in front of a group and say something and we don't like that everybody is looking at us. If you want to give a good presentation, you need to get out of your comfort zone. So expose yourself to these situations and you will become better and better. Also spend enough time to plan your presentations. The 3T rule and the PPAA method should be applied for a good and clear structured presentation. And please always rehearse your presentations. On average we rehearse only once, that is not enough. And if you think you don't have enough time for a rehearsal, think about the half week which we mentioned in the beginning in the, of this presentation. Even if you spend two or three hours on a rehearsal, that is nothing against the waste of half a week's time in the, if the presentation is not good. That's it. I hope you have a better idea now why it is very important to give good presentations. You should have learned something about what you should present and how you should present it. The 3T rule and the PPAA method should be very beneficial of your presentation. If you start to follow the action items, you will become a better presenter and make the next steps. And there is one more thing. No one is born as a perfect presenter. Don't give up if the feedback is not excellent in the beginning. If you try to learn a new foreign language, you won't be perfect after your first lesson. You have to learn and repeat this on and on. And that is the same with presentations. Presentations are, uh, presentations are a new language you need to learn when you want that other people understand you. I hope that, that this presentation was helpful for you. Please drop me a line and come back to me if you have any question or comment. This was Sascha Aweller for the Fuse community. Thanks for listening, cheers and goodbye.